you've been through Why you got scars Since you walked through the door I've been trying to reach you Cause I feel you What's the story to tell? What's the story behind? The mountain you're trying to climb Think of her really excited for the next one that we are doing chicken corn chowder i mentioned this in my last grocery haul and everybody said please film it so here we are i have everything prepped and ready to rock and roll i haven't made chicken corn chowder in a hot minute like years at this point i think but it is one of those just comfort foods that's delicious stick to the bone perfect for this time of year and awesome for the crock pot we love a good crock pot meal you guys know i've been going in with the crock pot meals left and right lately and you guys have been loving them but let's go ahead and dive right into all the goodies we're throwing in it here I have some boneless skinless chicken thighs that I am going to be browning in my cast iron again that's a step you guys could skip I know I say that every time in every video if you guys have been following for a minute I like to do it because it gives an extra layer of flavor and it adds to the texture just all of that so I am going to brown up my chicken thighs it will also cook off a little bit of the fat which helps saves for calories right and then we have some boneless skinless chicken breasts here that we're also going to throw in just to up the protein lower the calories make this a little more macro friendly but with all the flavor of the chicken thighs because we all know the juiciness and flavor and all of that jazz is definitely in the chicken thighs so we're throwing both of those in there then to it we are going to use some Badia complete seasoning as well as some of the kinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning i've got a massive can here of golden sweet whole kernel corn and then one can of cream style corn going to be adding both of those in i am going to drain this corn then we're going to add some heavy whipping cream at the end some minced garlic chicken bouillon i have a few potatoes here that i've cubed up and then onions celery and carrots. I'm also, once I take the chicken thighs out of the cast iron, I am going to saute these veggies in the cast iron just to soak up some of that flavor before I throw it in the crock pot. And I will have all the measurements for all of this at the end. You don't have to take this extra step, but the extra layer of flavor that it adds is like unmatched, so I highly recommend it. My cast iron is like slap full because I cut so many veggies up, but it's doing the trick. Now I'm going to add the chicken bouillon right to this and work it through and the minced garlic and then dump it in the crock pot. Just so we didn't leave any flavor behind and just to toast the corn because I think that'll add an extra awesome little touch. I went ahead and dumped the corn in the cast iron with just the residual heat and just kind of mixing it through getting all the flavor and then we will dump this baby in and the cream corn and it'll be ready to go. Got all the veggies in there. I just mixed the veggies a little bit through, added a little bit of water just to rinse the cans out and probably about a half a cup or so. And now I'm just gonna pop the lid on and put it on low and let it cook. This has been on low for about eight hours. We just took the chicken out, shredded it up. It was falling apart anyway, so didn't take much. Now we are gonna dump a half a cup of the heavy whipping cream in here and then mix it all back together. Chicken corn chowder is done. It made a massive amount. I have it set for like 10 servings, but depending on how big of the servings you want, you could make it fit to whatever macros that you need. I have one and a half pieces of cornbread here that we made up just for the chicken corn chowder alone. It is 364 calories, 33 grams of protein, 37 carbs, and 12 fat. You could top this with some cheese and some bacon bits, whatever just load it up however you want and it would be absolutely delicious and it makes a ton and leftovers are even better Guys, we're coming in hot with another crock pot chicken dish and I'm super pumped for this one. I think it's going to turn out delicious. I have never made it before. I will link the original recipe that I got the inspiration from down below. It actually wasn't a crock pot meal, but I am making it a crock pot meal because we're all about that crock pot life right now. And I will include all the measurements for all of this at the end. Starting off, we have some of the Members Mark Boneless Skinless Chicken Breast. We've got some Daisy Light Sour Cream, some Lime Juice, Badia Complete Seasoning, some minced Garlic, some chicken bouillon, oregano, some chili lime Trader Joe's seasoning, chili powder. We've got some fresh cilantro here. We've got a couple jalapenos, an onion, some Monterey Jack cheese, and then some frozen super sweet yellow corn. We're gonna shred our cheese, cut up our veggies, and then we're just gonna toss everything in together. All right, 
we've got this beauty all mixed up and ready to rock and roll. We're just going to put this baby on low and let it cook for probably about five or six hours. We'll check it and that's when we'll add the sour cream and the cheese. And then you guys saw I did end up throwing a can of black beans in there because why not? It sounded delicious. Then we'll top it with some cilantro when it is done, but I'll show you what it's looking like when we add the sour cream and the cheese. All right, guys, this has been on low for eight hours. Just shredded the chicken up. It's perfectly tender, smelling delicious. Now we are going to add our sour cream and our cheese. I may do a cornstarch slurry. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to let the sour cream and cheese cook for about 30 minutes in there and just get nice and creamy and then see if I want to add the cornstarch slurry. Now we have the sour cream and the cheese in there. We're just going to mix this through really good and let that heat through for about 30 minutes. Dinner is ready to rock and roll. You can barely see it under all of those awesome toppings. But when I added the sour cream and cheese in, I think I said it had been cooking for like eight hours. It wasn't. It was right over six hours, about six and a half hours. We put in the sour cream and cheese, and then I let it go for about another hour or so just to wait for everybody to get home and plate up dinner. So now everybody's home, and we're ready to eat dinner. I topped it with some of these tortilla strips. These are 35 calories a serving, which is two tablespoons, seven grams, and I have two servings beans on there and then just threw some chopped cilantro on there you could add some more cheese more sour cream some bacon bits you could top it with whatever you like I just went ahead with the tortilla strips and the cilantro and this whole bowl with the toppings is 395 calories 38 grams of protein 30 carbs and 15 fat All right, guys, we are going to make a delicious tomato basil chicken and pasta dish in the crock pot. Well, the pasta won't be cooked in the crock pot. We'll be making that separately. But we're going to cook the chicken and the sauce in the crock pot, and it's going to come together really easy. This is the first time I'm making it. I will link the original Pinterest recipe that I got the inspiration from down below. But we have some boneless, skinless chicken breasts here. I just use the frozen members mark. It's easier for me to do that, and I throw it straight in the crock pot frozen, and it works out perfectly. To it, we're going to be adding some pasta sauce, some diced tomatoes. This one has basil, garlic, and oregano in it. And we've got some Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse, some minced garlic, some basil, garlic powder. And then we're going to be making a cornstarch slurry with some heavy whipping cream and cornstarch. I'm first going to start by adding the pasta sauce, tomatoes, and the seasonings in the crock pot, getting those mixed up. Then I'll whisk together the cornstarch and the heavy cream, add that, toss the chicken in there. It's going to come together really quick and easy. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, I apologize for the washer and dryer super loud in the background, but I have the sauce here mixed up. Now we're going to add the cornstarch slurry. I did add salt and pepper, which I didn't show you guys before, but I did add some of that. And I ended up having to switch out the heavy whipping cream for some low fat fair life milk because the heavy whipping cream was no good. So we made our slurry here. We're just going to mix that right in the sauce. I need to add some heavy cream later if I feel like it needs a little more creaminess than I will because I'm going to pick some up from the store. All right, guys, we have that chicken all smothered in that sauce looking awesome the colors not even coming up perfect on camera but it's smelling delicious we're gonna pop this baby on low for about three to five hours depending on the size of your crock pot depending on how much chicken you have in there you want the internal temp to read about 165 degrees my chicken's frozen so it's probably going to take a little bit longer but i will show you as soon as it's ready all right guys i ended up adding two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream in here and we just went ahead and shredded the chicken up this lighting is horrendous but it's smelling delicious. We have some garlic bread in the air fryer, and then I'll show you when we plate this up. You guys, how absolutely delicious does that look? And I've already tasted it, and it tastes 10 out of 10. You definitely don't have to shred the chicken, but I felt like, why not? Just go ahead and do it. It makes it easier to eat, easier to separate servings, all of that, and it just was so tender. It shredded really nice. I've paired it with some sourdough garlic bread here. Just threw a little butter in Tinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning and some garlic powder on there and tossed it in the air fryer for a couple minutes and it's perfectly crispy and ready to rock and roll and then I also did top this with a little bit of the grated parmesan cheese just a little sprinkle and the pasta that I use is gorilla protein pasta you can use whatever pasta you have on hand this is clocking in at 631 calories 52 grams of protein 78 carbs and 13 fat just for the pasta without the garlic bread it's 409 calories 48 grams of protein 47 carbs and 5 fat 
You could opt for less calories with the garlic bread also and just lightly spray it with avocado oil. I used real butter on it this go round. I did 10 grams of butter, so not a ton, but that definitely does up the calories. Or you could omit the garlic bread altogether. Clearly that was delicious. I cleaned my entire plate as usual. It was 10 out of 10 bomb. Hubby even said it was delicious as well. But I realized as I was eating that I forgot to add the heavy whipping cream in my recipe builder. So I added that and just for the tomato basil chicken part itself, it was 236 calories, 38 grams of protein, nine carbs and six fat. If you add the protein pasta, and the garlic bread, then it clocked in at 648 calories, 53 grams of protein, 79 carbs, and 15 fat. If you're currently in a weight loss phase or a cut and you are wanting to cut back on the calories, you could leave out the garlic bread, you could throw that chicken mixture on some veggies with a baked potato or sweet potato, any of it, it would be absolutely delicious. I love